everyone. I am here with my friend Lauren Bentley, who's Pastor Karen Wheaton's firstborn daughter, and she and her husband Sam are um, a part of the ramp in Cleveland, leading there our ramp Cleveland. And of course, we've been in ministry together doing ramp stuff and revival and awakening for a long time. I've known her my whole life, and we want to just reminisce and chat to a specific audience today, and that is moms of young children. So if you're a mom and you've got young little toddlers, babies around you, um, this may encourage you, it may bless you. So Lauren, tell us about your family, tell us about your kids, what their ages are. Yes, I have four, and it's girl boy, girl boy. So Lydia is 20, then William is 14. Oh, I get all the ages oh, mixed I, up. I, I mess it up too sometimes. Caroline is 10. No, she's 11. Caroline's <laughs> 11. It's okay. And Jonathan is nine. <laughs> the other day I met somebody at my house for the first time, another pastor, and I told them about my kids and I was so brain fried and I got all their ages wrong. And I was like stuttering. I was trying so hard to remember. It was terribly embarrassing. I do know my children. I know their ages. I have three girls and my three girls are 14, 12, and 10. Now, did you finish saying all your kids? Did you? Yes, say? Okay, I, I got them all in. Before. Okay. <laughs> and they grew up together for a little while. Yes, they were already. we lived right beside each other and we're yes. neighbors and that was so special, so fun before we moved to the UK. So, so Lauren and I, um, Lauren, in a few words, describe maybe what, how would you describe the inner struggle, because there's glory, and there's right. blessing, there's fulfilled desire, there's cuteness, and there's ah, uh, it's amazing, and it's a mystery, it's beautiful how God works family and children and motherhood, and then there's the underbelly side. It's the daily dying <laughs> is the how I would describe Daily dying, it. yes. The little years. So true. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what oh. that was like for you. Well, you know, whenever they're first born and you're just bringing them home and, and you're that first time mom, especially, and you just don't, you know, you're just learning and all of a sudden you need to go to the grocery store, but you can't because the child is going to scream, yeah. it's going to be hungry and you have to stop. And so there's just all of the things that you're used to doing on your own. I felt like all of that stopped yeah. and I couldn't do. And so it was just, I, it sounds terrible because no. there is all of the glory and wonderful yes. things. And there's nothing in the world that I love more than being a mom now, especially. Yeah, yeah. But in those younger years, whenever I too was young, then you're, you're learning how yeah. to say no to all the things that you want, the things that you are used to doing um, and what you want to do. You want to go hang out with your friends and do all the things that you did as a single yeah, girl yeah, yeah. Uh, or young married girl and now you can't and so that it was just a daily dying of learning to sacrifice myself and what I wanted for this little person who needed me so much yes and then they I think I think one thing that helps helps me even in motherhood now or family life really any kind of family life is is just going really big picture and seeing this goal of one of the goals God has for my life is to sanctify Stacy. <laughs> Sanctification, right? I was justified the moment I believed and confessed. And then the rest of my life is this process of sanctification, of becoming like Christ, of maturing. And that's the goal for every believer. And so God has, you know, various ways that he does that. And family, whether it's, it's your so natural true. born children or it's your mother or your aunt, you've got some family and they are God's chosen tools for your sanctification, right? It's true. They are his choice tool. They are going to work patience in you. They are going to work <laughs> self-restraint. They are going to bring you to your knees in desperation before God. And, and motherhood is one of the many beautiful ways, glorious ways, joy. There's joy there. There's joy and Absolutely. there's suffering and anything. God on this side of eternity it's two cups it's joy and suffering and God working his image in us giving us these opportunities to learn his heart right to experience right. his heart his love that's otherworldly and to just keep us in this process of growing of really growing and when you can see like motherhood and all these other challenges as tools for growth so that we are becoming mature in love I think it helps because it can feel so like pointless sometimes like 
I, I know that sounds extreme, but you can lose the plot. You can lose the plot in you all can. of the diaper changing Easily. and all that you're doing. And maybe you're feeling isolated. You don't get to see the same people, the same rhythms. It's this major life transition, major yeah. life transition, and you're learning how to redo everything about life, and you can lose the plot. Have you? What was it like for you in trying to like kind of come into this uh, sense of identity, this sense of purpose, and how did you come to value? the role of being a mom or who inspired you to do that or talk about that for a minute. Um, well, I also think, you know, one of the things that makes that hard is because so many times the husband is still going about life as normal, not always, yeah, yeah. but sometimes, and I remember whenever we were young moms, our husbands would still be at services mm -hmm. late at night, hanging mm -hmm. out like oh, we yeah. all used to be yeah. and out at conferences until two in the morning, you know, hanging yeah. out in the green room. And we're not, we're at home. And yeah. it was before iPhones. Yeah, like yeah, when our yeah. kids were young, we yeah. didn't have iPhones to right. go, you know. We couldn't locate them and find out where they were. <laughs> no, no, you like sit there with a book and a rocking yeah, chair. It yeah. sounds like the, you know, 1950s, <laughs> but <laughs> it yeah. felt like that too sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that was part of it. You know, you just kind of, you do take on this new identity. Um, and you have to find women that you really can look up to to say, you know, there is this power in motherhood. Yeah. Um, and we, we came across Therese Engel. Mm -hmm. And she was, she's Lou Engel's wife. So Lou Engel is an incredible minister. Yes, he um, is. From the States who just has an incredible prayer ministry. Mm -hmm. And Therese, they have, was it eight children? Is they that had how many? a lot of children. They had so many children. Mm -hmm. And she was this mother extraordinaire, but also anointed and also believed in her husband and yeah, supporting yeah. him. And, um, but just so fulfilled and just so had this identity and anointing as a mother that you just, we all looked up to her. Yeah. And I remember she came to us at a winter ramp and pulled all of us moms aside and got us together and, and just said, I wanna pour into you ladies. And it was whenever all of us had our young kids. And that was so life-giving to me in that moment, mm. um, to just have somebody that recognized where we were because yeah. so much of it is unseen. And yes. it's, you're yeah. back at home with your little baby and nobody's thanking you yeah. for changing that diaper. Nobody is really paying any attention to you, but you're really doing God's most important work. Yeah. You're really doing the thing that matters the most. It does matter. Mm -hmm. I love what you were just saying though about Therese because, um, and even pulling, pulling us all together, because sure, there are, there are many different flavors of motherhood and that looks different. You know, your, your scenario may look different than my scenario and sure there's some um, common ground, but it's, it, is, it is unique. You've got your own thing that maybe you're like, well, I don't know if this applies to me, but no matter what type of mom you are, I think it's really important to have inspiration. I right. mean, even in Titus, the book of Titus, you know, where, where he's instructing these older women in the book of Titus to teach the younger woman. And because the world doesn't value this stuff, it's really important to find a godly example, somebody Absolutely. that you look up to that values what they're doing as a mom, as a wife, and try to just get time with them, or um, who, who do you look up to? Get some inspiration. Uh, in the body of Christ, find a woman of God who, like Therese Engel, she has, she has just found that grace line, that anointing, that kingdom mindset about family, because right. the world's mindset about family is light years from the kingdom mindset and God's intention for family, his value for family, and uh, find inspiration, and find other women, you know, who, whoever you are, whatever your flavor of momhood is, uh, you're better together. You're better right. with people that can encourage you. And I can remember we, we came together in your living room one time. This was the first time I was able to actually get out of the house after one of, one of my children had just been born. I think I had a newborn and a toddler and we got together and this was like, it was like we were emerging from our caves. It was like we, had, the truth. we, we had not been out and about very much and we came together and I remember just hearing the struggles and feeling like, okay, I'm not losing my mind. Right, my kids I, aren't bad. My kids aren't bad, my kids might be normal. <laughs> yes, like, that's just true. that community <laughs> did so much, that conversation to silence the voice of the accuser. 
And it's true. sometimes the enemy comes in to accuse, to condemn, and it can just, it's not, you don't, you don't have to fast to fix that. You just need a conversation with somebody to fix that. So mm -hmm. you can hear, oh, no, this is because God intended us to live in community. And no matter what season of life you're in, no matter what your mom's style, no matter the age of your kids, God designed you to be a part of a community. And when you aren't in community, you have to fight a lot more battles in your head. That's right. And you've got to discern a lot more on your own than when you're in the presence of other women in the living room and somebody's just saying, listen, chill out. That's normal. My kid did that 500 times yesterday. You know? <laughs> yeah, it helps. It yes, helps so much. Yes. And I think that was a big turning point for all of us to come together and we did that book study. We did, we yes, found a book that yes, we loved on motherhood on. and we did that book study together. Just encouraged each it other awesome. and prayed and just got a breath of fresh air. And, yep. and sure there's challenges, you know, child care and all these different things that you're, you're juggling with. But you're, I love what, um, what, one of, what our children's pastor told me back then. She said, Stacy, you're anointed for your kids. Like That's you're so anointed good. for this. You're anointed for these kids, these challenges that they have. God's anointed you for them to be their mom. And out of all the different moms, God chose you to be their mom. So you can do this. And, and just hearing that was so reassuring. Um, Lauren, yeah. let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. So you've got, you know, you've got the kid thing, you've got the work thing, you've got all these things. How did you maintain a rich relationship with God? Because we know, no matter what season we're in, we're called to a rich relationship with Jesus, a real relationship with Jesus. Yes. But when, whenever you're in any sort of major transition, that can, you know, that can look different. It can change in how the outworking of that looks. Did you have any like little? tricks of, you know, how did you maintain uh, time with the Lord, time to be in community? How did you keep yeah. your life with God alive and vibrant? Well, there was a verse that the Lord gave me whenever the kids were little. And to be honest, I don't remember the exact reference. I'd have to look it up, but it was in Isaiah. But it says the Lord gently guides those who are with young. Aww. And that voice was like water to me in yes, that season because I just felt like, you know, going from a time where you could spend all the time in the world with God, you know, you could spend hours and hours studying the word if you wanted to, to all of a sudden, a lot of that time is right. taken yeah. by some crazy responsibility. Right. Um, and so going from that to that, you do have a lot of condemnation on you where you feel like, oh God, I'm not as close to you as I used to be. And that scripture was just like a big hug from mm. the Lord to say, no, I am gently guiding you in this yeah, season. Yeah. Really um, it good. just reassured me of his presence with me there. I love that, um, So that was awesome. And, you know, you do that, that balance is just so important of putting God first so that you can be a healthy version right. of yourself. I can still tell, I mean, the kids are older now, but I can still tell when I've not taken the time in the mornings to spend with the Lord yeah. and just, you know, wake up just that little bit earlier yeah. to do that, then I'm more irritable with them. Yeah. My fuse is a lot shorter with them. So it's, you know, just making sure that you have that those priorities yes. in the right place of putting God above even your family. Yeah. You know, your family can come next. Yeah. Your ministry can come next. Yeah, yeah. But first you have to put the Lord there first. You know, I think that to me is that just sums it up. You know, you, there's only one thing that can be number one in your right. life. And as all consuming as kids are and as glorious and as beautiful as it is, family and children were never intended to be the number one priority in our right. life. And they were never intended to be the source of our security, our, they, they are outlets and expressions and avenues that we can experience God and grow in God, but Jesus alone can be the first place. And, and oftentimes, you know, we just have to go back to just even saying, Lord, I want you to be first in my life. Rearrange anything that needs to be rearranged. Show me how to do this. Right. And in different seasons when I've struggled to know, okay, Lord, how am I going to do all of this, show me. I just say, Lord, teach me your way. You know, there's so many verses in Psalms where it says, teach me your way, Lord, that I can walk in it. And when you enter in the season of mom, mom, you know, little ones or a new season with, with different responsibilities, sometimes it helps just to write it down, just to say it out, make it a regular prayer. Lord, I want you to be first in the real functional aspects of my life. Teach me how to do that. 
and then yeah. learn from others and um and yeah priority so like simple things like if i haven't had time with the lord i'm not going to get on my phone if i haven't That's had good. time with the lord i'm not going to clean the dishes although sometimes i love to clean the dishes because i hate being in a messy space if i haven't had time like pri i prioritize my time if i haven't had time with the lord i'm not going to go to the movie theater if i haven't had time with the lord i may not eat breakfast until i do that these these little things it doesn't have to be an epic revival happening earth shaking in my bedroom it's it's my daily bread it sustains me and i love what bill johnson says not every meal is memorable but right. it sustains but it me sustains you for that day yes and i love the trigger too i love to put one of those little things i'm not going to do this until i've had yeah, this time with yeah, the lord yeah. i'm not going to eat breakfast yeah. until i've taken my time yeah so that That's you so have yeah. that stop point because you're going to be hungry and your body's going to tell you put food in my <laughs> Yes. But if you have that trigger to say, no, I'm not doing that because I've not had my time yet with the yeah, Lord, or yeah. just one of those triggers does help. Yes, yes, just little things like that, that we can learn from each other, that we have learned from yes. each other. We don't, nobody comes knowing how to do it. And so this is why God designed us into, just hardwired us for mm -hmm. communities because we learn so much and yes. find so much encouragement by doing uh, life together. And, and as, as a young mom, that's often one of the first things to go is we, right. we say we can't go anywhere. And sure, there's a season, you know, maybe those first few weeks or whatever, depending on the specific scenario that you're in, where you can be stretched and Jesus is enough for you there in those right. seasons. Um, but that, that lifestyle, it's a lifestyle of community. It's a lifestyle of communion with him. And we were made for all of that, so there's grace for each of us to really walk yeah. in that. Were, were there any other, in particular, like specific challenges or things you had to learn or navigate? Um, or what are some of maybe the things that you feel like being a mom has really developed in you? Muscles that strengthened or... You know, I think being a mom quieted my heart in a lot of ways and it taught me um, just those first years really solidified, I think, our family base. Mm. Because, you know, I'm a driven person. Yeah. I want to do things. I yeah, want to yeah. succeed. And um, that's my personality. And, um, and I'm thankful. I, I did have a beautiful example in my mom. And I yes. think that that really paved the way for especially the priorities thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw that lived out in front of me. I saw her put her relationship with God first. I yeah. listened to her praying in the living room in yeah, the mornings, that. you know. So I remember that. And, um, and, but then I knew how much she loved me. Mm -hmm. And even though she was traveling a lot whenever we were young, um, but I never felt like she was away from the home. Mm. I remember, I don't, one of the things that I share a lot is I don't really remember her leaving as much as I remember what it was like when she came home. Oh, I remember wow. the way she smelled coming off of the airplane. Yeah. Um, I remember her being at home and making home just this amazing place. And then her ministry was after that. I never felt like, even though she traveled, I never felt like she's putting the ministry and all of her ambitions in front of me. Wow. You know, that, so one of the things that, that really, I feel like those little years solidified in me and even, you know, that community that we built together mm -hmm. was how important it was for me to love my home, my family yeah, yeah. in my home. Yeah. That is such a high priority of my life. Good Lord. That sets that foundation so that whatever is built on top of that, for me and my goals, yeah. and my dreams is really only built strong and steady whenever that foundation of family yes. is strong and steady. That's so, so good. Those little years really solidified, even though it felt like dying and it felt like the opposite, it felt like I was going in the opposite direction of achieving any of my goals. Yeah. But putting that in priority and putting those years, investing that time in those years when they were so young to just love them and lay down all of my dreams and just serve them and cook their food and change mm -hmm. their diapers and do all of the dirty work. Yeah. It put my heart and my love in them first yeah. so that now whenever I go and I do, really my heart is only yearning to get back to my family. Oh, I love that. And isn't that so true that when we sacrifice for something, sacrifice helps cultivate love. You know, it does. It really, it's like a seed that goes in and then the fruit of that sacrifice is love. And right. And it is a lot of sacrifice, but it fosters this love. And if we don't have love, the Bible says whatever we do is nada. It's nothing. 
So love is what creates, you know, it's, it's the launching pad for everything that we do. And yeah. sometimes we want to be maybe like we, we get mixed up in our mind and our thinking. We have these exterior things, these successful things, these drives, these dreams, like you were saying about, we want that to be successful. But if it's not from the inside out, from the working of this, this love in here, this compelled by love that Paul talks about, yes. um, then that's not going to ever be lasting. And we've got these homes, these families that God has entrusted to us, these blessed some of you with. And I think I just, we would just want to maybe even just close by saying, don't be distracted by lesser things. Um, have that real healthy relationship with Jesus. In that healthy relationship with Jesus, that relationship with Jesus then empowers your family relationships to be healthy right. and to flourish. And then from those family relationships flourish, all these dreams, these exterior things, these career ambitions, those will get there. But yes. be healthy from the inside out, inside the walls of your home, inside the walls of your bedroom. Inside, Let the Holy Spirit do the work of sanctification. Just stay in the game. I mean, He's sanctifying. You just don't quit. You just keep in the game. And that selfishness is, you're going to, like Lauren said, what is it about? It's about dying daily. And oh my gosh, we could preach, we could preach weeks on just that topic of how we, we don't like to die and we walk around half died, half dead, half alive, but we have to be dead to sin, like Paul said. Die to it. I love even what <laughs> this book, um, this missionary book, I can't, the name has slipped me, but it's called A Chance to Die. And do you remember this some missionary? And I'm so sorry, I, I can't remember, remember the her cover. name. But I don't this cover in this missionary. I don't know why her um, her name has slipped my mind. But basically, the whole book about finding it a chance to die. And sometimes yes. when I'm just walking around the house, this helps me. That book title. Now that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great just write a book title that's convicting in itself? Chance to die. And it's like, you've got these things, you've got baby that's fussing, you can't like find in it a chance to die, Stacy. Let the flesh die today and let the spirit man be alive and fulfilled. So anything else you would add on any of that? Oh, I don't know. Just be encouraged. Yeah. You're going to make it. It's a yes. season. <laughs> yes. You are going to make it. Yes. And this matters. And, and uh, just reach out to somebody. Find somebody to pray with you, to encourage you. Get in God's Word. Read about the women of faith in this book. Uh, read about what matters in the kingdom. Read about what matters in the kingdom and to the Father, because that is vastly different than what the world mm -hmm. applauds. In fact, Jesus even said, he said out of his mouth, forgive me for not having the exact reference, he says what the world, he's actually in the context of talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the disciples, and he says what the world honors is detestable in the sight of God. God honors, his system of honor and value is completely different than what we initially think. But that's why we renew right. our mind. So, And 1 Peter 3, too. It, yes. It's all about developing that gentle and quiet spirit. Yes. And it says, which is so precious to God. Oh, I love so that. So that, that's something that the Holy Spirit, it's precious to Him. Yes, yes. Developing in us. And that, that scripture is talking about women in particular. Yeah, Developing yes. in us a gentle and quiet spirit. Yes, just Which that is so precious to God. Yes. And I think of that, yeah, to be like even that gentle and the quiet spirit within the home, within the challenges of family life. To, to be like Paul said, to learn contentment in Christ. Yes, and those words, it actually means not to let your emotions get so ruffled up. Mm, it's learning to manage and get control of your emotions. And that, that gentle powerful. and quiet is not all about just being... Like intimidated, it's not like just no, being... No, no, yeah. no. It's about learning to control yourself. Oh. Getting your emotions in check. Yes, do the work, Holy Spirit. Work. <laughs> he's, in, he's sanctifying us yes, all. Yes, <laughs> he's sanctifying us all. Well, amen. Well, let, let us just pray over you. Um, Father, we thank you for just how you give us daily bread. You give us what we need to sustain us, Lord. And we pray for these, these moms, these, these moms that have young children, just to be encouraged, Lord. We, we ask that you would work in us, God, that we would have our minds renewed, that we would think as you think about our children, about our family, that we would value what you value. And Lord, in areas where maybe we've gone um, awry and Lord, we've, we've misstepped and we're, we're off on our priorities or we're off on our values, we ask you, Holy Spirit, shine your light. We want to walk in your ways. We want to know your ways. We want to do your will, Lord, and we want to do it your way. We want to love what you love and hate what you hate. 
And Father, we do pray that we would um, just continue to surrender, to die daily, to let your spirit work in us and through us to produce the life of Christ, the life that, we were, that he died to give us, that abundant life, that spirit-filled life. And we thank you for your patience, Holy Spirit, and your commitment to teach us and to show us the way forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope this blessed you.